Disclaimer. All credit for the following pictures and information can be found in the description below. Welcome back trainers to Pokemon New Zealand where a world of adventure awaits you. Last we left off, Team Rocket has taken the third ancient relic, so now it's time to continue our adventure. Head on over to Route 22 to continue to your next destination. As we'll be heading towards the Southern Alps, Route 22 will be based on that mountain range. The Southern Alps are one of the longest chains of mountains in the country with some of the tallest peaks as well. Types of trainers that you will find here are hikers, black belts, Pokemon rangers, ace trainers, and hex maniacs. The Pokemon you'll meet during the day are weasels, bellbirds, fantails, horses, maero, and lanterns. At night, you'll be able to find rats, rudus, fantails, horses, maeros, and lanterns. We now make our way over to our new destination, Queenstown. Queenstown is an outdoor haven for all those who seek adventure with activities such as skiing, bungee jumping, skydiving, canyon swinging, river rafting, and more. Unfortunately, the town is overrun by Team Rocket, who nearly occupied the entire town. You confront some of the locals in hiding, who inform you that Team Rocket have taken the fourth sacred item, an ancient feather from their town, and that the leader was heading towards the peak of Mount Cook. When you try to leave town, one of the Team Rocket grunts spot you and tries to prevent you from going up the mountain, but you manage to defeat him. To get to Mount Cook, we will have to go through Route 23, which is based on Aoraki Mount Cook National Park. A land of ice and rock, the park is home to some of the world's largest glaciers and highest mountains. During the day, you'll be able to find Pokemon such as Kias, Shamwas, Geckos, Maeros, Lanterns, and Moas. The Shamwas are mostly solitary creatures with the females and young forming mostly loose or unstable groups. At night, you'll be able to find Kiwis, Weras, Manayas, Maeros, Lanterns, and Hostigals. Types of trainers you'll find here are Ace Trainers, Bird Keepers, Dragon Tamers, Pokemon Rangers, Psychics, and Scientists. We finally make our way over to the destination in hand, Mount Cook. For many tribes, Mount Cook is considered a sacred area that links the supernatural with the natural world. Standing guard at the base of Mount Cook, Watunga, Toei, and Abel, the three Team Rocket leaders, try to prevent you from meeting their admin. James and Koopy arrive just in time to assist you in defeating these three in a three-on-three -three battle. As you make your way towards the summit, some of the gym leaders try to stop you from reaching there. Tahuiri, Mahuika, and Hinanui Tepo all want to see what happens when the four secret items are offered at the summit. The remaining gym leaders, Rongo, Tumatuenga, Tangaro, and Dane, confront them and persuade you to continue further as they deal with the opposing gym leaders. You finally make your way towards the summit of Mount Cook. It will be here that you will finally meet the Team Rocket admin, Aoraki. According to Maori legend, Aoraki was sailing on his canoe to visit Papatuanaku, or Mother Earth. On his way back to Ranginui, or Father Sky, his canoe broke, creating South Island, and he and his brothers turned to stone, creating the Southern Alps. Aoraki could not stand seeing his people in conflict with the Europeans, so he wants to use the relics in order to revive Rangi and Papa in order to assist him for his cause. Maui arrives to the summit to warn Aoraki that performing the ritual will do more harm than good, and asks the trainer to assist him. You challenge Aoraki to a battle, of which you ultimately win. Despite losing, Aoraki ignores him and continues the ritual regardless. At first, it would appear as though Rangi and Papa would appear from the sky and the earth. Instead, what appears is the legendary Pokemon Depo, the literal embodiment of darkness, who sought to cover the world in darkness. After defeating Depo, two more legendary Pokemon, Dekore and Teao, the embodiment of nothingness and light, calm Depo down, and the three Pokemon vanish into space, returning the world back to normal. With order restored, you return to Queenstown to check on its condition. All the Team Rocket grunts have been taken care of by the gym leaders and the locals have successfully regained control of the town. The people of Queenstown thank you for saving them and the world. The opposing gym leaders apologize for stopping you after seeing what had happened and the remaining gym leaders state that they will deal with the Team Rocket leaders and the consequences of their actions. Maui explains that the four secret items return to their original locations. This time, they will be protected by powerful Pokemon and trainers who will be guarding the secret items to make sure that something like this does not happen again. We now make our way over to Route 25 to continue to our next destination. Route 25 will be based on the Longwood Forest Conservation Area, a former major gold mining site with a variety of aqueducts to help support the mining business. The Pokemon you will meet during the day here are bellbirds, weasels, skinks, dragonflies, horses, and trains. At night, you will be able to find kiwis, rats, wetas, snails, horses, and trains. Types of trainers that you will find here are campers, picnickers, Pokemon 
Pokemon Rangers, Moon Maniacs, Ninja Boys, and Ace Trainers. We now make our way over to our next destination, Invercargill. Invercargill is known as the City of Water and Light, and as the southernmost city in the world, it experiences frequent southern lights. Invercargill is home to many famous motor vehicle and motorcycle collections, including E. Hayes Motor Works, which houses the motorbike of a legendary motorcyclist. And this is where our gym will be. After defeating several bikers, you will come across the gym leader, Hine Titama. Hine Titama is the first daughter of Tane and Hine Ahu One, who ultimately became Hine Nui Tepo after realizing that her husband was also her father. Hine Titama will have five Pokemon, Ngatori Nangi's sister, Pate Pairaha, Hine Puhoku Nangi, Tetini Ohakuturi, and Pake Pakeha. Tetini Ohakuturi are spirits that protect the forest from harm and disrespect. Pake Pakeha are pale-skinned fairies that sing while drifting down rivers. Upon defeating her, Hine Titama will provide you with the Light Badge and the TM Dazzling Gleam. With all eight badges collected, it is time to go to the Pokemon League. Head over to Route 26 to continue to your next destination. Route 26 will be based on the Awaura Waituna Wetlands. The wetlands are visited by a large variety of migrating wadding birds and home to various plants and insects. Pokemon that you'll find here during the day are Pupeko, Dragonfly Skinks, Bellbirds, Dactylanthus, and Motorbikes. The motorbikes will be based on the various motor vehicles in the many museum's collections. At night, the Pokemon you'll be able to find are frogs, snails, worms, kiwis, and motorcycles. If you choose to fish here, you may be able to catch some mudfish. The types of trainers you will find here are bird keepers, ninja boys, parasol ladies, aroma ladies, bikers, and ace trainers. We now make our way towards the next destination, Bluff. Not only does Bluff have some of the best oysters in the world, it is also the gateway to Stewart Island, the location of our Pokemon League. After showing the port guard your eight gym badges, you take the ferry to your final destination, Stewart Island. The ferry will take you to Oban, which is also known as Half Moon Bay. Oban is the only settlement on Stewart Island and is the starting point of many hiking trails, which is where the road to the Pokemon League would begin. Before you leave town, you are stopped by Kupe. Kupe informs you that James was already on his way to the Pokemon League, but before he lets you go, he challenges you to a match. After you defeat him, Kupe informs you that, according to the locals, the trails to the Pokemon League are nothing like they've ever experienced thus far. Head on over to Victory Road, which is based on Rakiura National Park. Covering nearly 85% of the island, the park covers a wide variety of landscapes ranging from freshwater wetlands to sand dunes. Taking advantage of these landscapes, the park will divide it into eight sections, each representing the trainer's badges. The trainer will have to complete various tasks in these landscapes in order to prove that they are worthy to be in the Pokemon League. During your time completing these trials, there is a chance you'll be challenging various Pokemon, of which there are many due to the multiple environments. All trials will end when you place the gym badges in certain stone altars, which will allow you to go to the next trial. Every trial will have a trial guide, which will inform you of what you'll need to do and provide you with a piece of the League Entry Badge when the trial is completed. With that out of the way, let's head over to your first trial. The first trial will be based on the Root Badge. The trainer will have to harvest various root vegetables such as skumara, dado, and yams in a desert field and present them to an altar located in an oasis. Once all the harvested crops are presented, the trainer can place the badge inside the altar and continue on to the next trial. The second trial will be based on the Club Badge. You will temporarily coach a group of Maeros as they take on a group of Passimians in a mini rugby match in an open plain. Make the correct calls for the Maeros to win and they will lead you to a stone altar where you will place the badge to continue to your next trial. The third trial will be based on the Spa Badge. With only a torch, navigate your way to the bottom of a cavern where another stone altar would reside near a thermal pond for you to heal your Pokemon. After lighting up the third stone altar with a torch, place the third gym badge on the altar to proceed to your next trial. The fourth trial will be based on the Sea Badge. The trial guide will ask you if you can help clean up the litter by the bay. If you are able to pick up more than the designated amount, particularly the ones that are in the bay, the trial guide will escort you to the stone altar where you can place your badge to continue to your next trial. The fifth trial will be based on the Skyline Badge. Your task is to try to match two Pokemon with the same bird call out of various bird calls on top of tall trees. If you successfully match all of them, the birds will reveal a stone altar for you to put your badge in to continue on to your next trial. The sixth trial will be based on the Tree Badge. Your task is to assist the trial guide on taking notes of the various plant life that are growing in the region. Take pictures of various plants and berries and report back to the trial guide when you have completed your task. The trial guide will take you to a stone altar where you can place your badge in order to continue to your next trial. The seventh trial will be based on the spirit badge. Investigate the ruins of an early Maori settlement by solving various riddles and puzzles. When you complete all these riddles and puzzles, a stone altar will mysteriously appear, allowing you to place your badge there to continue on to your next trial. The eighth trial will be based on the light badge. Using your bike, navigate through various trails through mountains, hills, and dirt paved roads within the time limit. Beat that time and the trial 
Trial Guide will take you to the Stone Altar where you can place your final gem badge. With the Pokemon Entry League badge finally completed, head to the end of the trail where the Pokemon League resides. Before you enter, you see James standing at the entrance of the League. James states that the Elite Four were tougher than he expected and is going back to the park to train his Pokemon some more. James challenges you to a match to see if you are ready for the League. Upon defeating him, James claims that you might have what it takes to become the Pokemon League champion. Now, enter the Pokemon League to challenge the Elite Four. You will be challenging the Elite Four in a fixed order. The first member you will face is Weirdo, the Lord of Darkness and the Embodiment of Evil. He will have five Pokemon, a Weavile, a Malmar, a Crocodile, an Ant, and a Patapodaha. The second member you will face is Tamanumitera, the Sun God who was forced to travel slowly across the sky after Maori caught him in his trap. He will have five Pokemon, a Scissor, a Skarmory, a Bronzong, a Hedgehog, and a Catfish. The third member you will face is Puharangi, a Celestial Being who descended from the heavens to be with an Earthly Maiden. He will have five Pokemon, a a Dragonite, a Gudra, a Komo, a Weta, and a Gecko. The final member you will face is Rehua, a star god who lived in the highest of heavens and is said to cure blindness and raise the dead. He will have five Pokemon, a Claydol, a Sigilith, a Galarian Rabidash, a Rangi, and a Dolphin. After defeating the Elite Four, you make your way over to the final battle with the League Champion, Maui. Maui congratulates you for making it this far and is proud of seeing you grow to become a powerful trainer. After performing a Haka, Maui accepts your challenge. The six Pokemon that Maui carries are all based on his various myths and deeds. A fantail, an earthworm, a dolphin, a war canoe, a mahoy, and a host eagle. Once you defeat Maui, you can finally register your Pokemon into the Pokemon Hall of Fame. Congratulations trainer, you are the Pokemon League Champion.